Hey everybody, it's Friday, January Happy 22nd. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. And what is this? This is like the third Friday or、uh, fourth Friday? Let me check. Third Friday. This is the fourth Friday. Fourth Friday. Fourth. Yeah. So、Counting have, the first of、uh, January. So this is actually, we have five Fridays in January. We have one more Friday left next week. Yay. January. So. Today's episode, we're gonna discuss events that happened on January the 22nd.、Mm-hmm. And we'll learn about our stuff of the day. What's、so、the theme? The theme? We gotta find out. Okay, we <laughs> we'll have find to、out. find out the theme. There's clues everywhere, so you gotta find out. So, let's start. So, today's observance, our first one is Hot Sauce Day. Not a big fan. Why are you not a big fan of hot sauce? I'm not a big fan of spicy. But food. Food, food needs spices to, like, you know. I can do mild. Make it. My mom, m o m is a hot sauce. It's just like a different level of yeah. hot. Yes? Mild sauce. Mild sauce. So, typically, we put, if you were to enjoy hot sauce, we usually put it on.、Uh, I would say something on, greasy. Like, tacos. Yeah. Burritos. It kind of, it, it kind of、uh, how do you say, counteracts. The,、uh, the greasiness of the food. Right. So, you know, some hot sauce, it's not about the hotness, it's about the sweetness and other aftertaste or like undertaste of the、uh, taste.、Mm-hmm. So, would you prefer if it's like mild with a little bit of sweetness to it? Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah? yeah. I mean, there's some food that you have to like already put a lot of hot sauce, like hot wings. Yeah, that one. Like chicken wings, you put a lot of hot sauce. For me, it was like a, it was a year where. Everything I ate, I put the basket on.、Really? Everything. And I ate it so much, my mouth was like burning. It's like, it like、no. a burning sensation? No, it's not just burning sensation. Like, it had like cuts and welts because it was just like, burning through all my mouth. Ah,、oh, that sounds worse. Yeah, I stopped, you know, I stopped eating a lot of hot sauce. Like, it hurts when it goes in and it hurts when it goes out as well, too, right? Oh, no. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes.、Um, Nowadays, I don't get hot sauce that much because I really want to enjoy food for its flavor. And sometimes the hot sauce kind of like overpowers it, and you don't know what you're eating. That's true. But I think we,、uh, it's all going to depend on how,、uh, how much would you put. Because again, right, you right. Know,、um, it's about like moderation. It's all, yeah, it's, it's moderation. always going to be about moderation for you to enjoy whatever, whatever you're doing or eating. you know? So, like, some days when. You know how you're supposed to have, like, you're just supposed to drink water every day to keep yourself healthy, right?、Mm-hmm. Some days I just don't want to drink water, and the best way to force myself to drink water is to put hot sauce on my food, and I'll be drinking a lot of water, which is really bad because you should drink what、well, you should drink to counteract the hotness. <laughs> It should be something dairy. Like milk. Yeah, yeah. drink milk to reduce the hotness. For me, I'm like drinking tons and tons of water. That's, that's how I hydrate myself. But, I、yeah. force myself to drink hot stuff. <laughs> But、oh, why are you torturing yourself? Just drink water regularly. No, something about water is just like. It doesn't have any you know, taste to it. That's true. It, it, it's more like a chore when you have to drink it every day. Okay. So when I, when I had to drink it out of、like、necessity, like when I'm dehydrated or it's hot, I'll drink it. Oh, okay. But it was just regular day, I'll just spend all day w a t c h i n g it. Is not, which is not good. You have to keep yourself hydrated. Well, in my case,、uh, I actually prefer drinking something that doesn't have flavor for、really? some reason. Like, I mean, yeah, I can drink soda, I can, juice, I can drink juice, but、uh, it's not like, like the way I drink water. It, it's just basically for me, water quenches all kinds of thirst for、mm. me.、Um, but I, I still drink juice and soda once in a while, but it, it doesn't really fully、um, quench my thirst for some reason. Really? Um, like, if I drink juice in a meal, I still drink water. Yeah, yeah. Just, just to, I guess, to wash the flavor out of my mouth. It's like a palate cleanser. Yeah. Cleanser、uh-huh. And I guess my, my tongue got used to it.、Yeah. So. so, I want to know what you guys' favorite、uh, hot sauce is. And also, what kind of food you usually、uh, typically eat with it.、Mm-hmm. For me, like I said, I usually eat it with、uh, Mexican food. So, for like hot sauce, you like it tangy or sweet? Or I would say sweet. Sweeter or sweet. Yeah. So that's hot sauce day. Next is National Polka Dot Day. So, Polka Dot, it was actually famous during the time when they had polka music.、Mm-hmm. So, they associate the music at that time with the, with the dots. fashion. With the、oh, fashion. With the fashion. <laughs> And there's a, what do you call it? There's a really common,、uh, popular song. You probably know this the Itsy Bitsy Kini Wini、mm-hmm. Polka Dot. Yellow, yellow Polka bikini, Dot Bikini. Yellow, yellow bikini. 
Are you a fan of polka dot on your clothing? You I'm okay. What I find surprising about polka dots is the, uh, the way they do um, they they do the pattern. Mm -hmm. When you say dot, you would think about something like a like a, a like a dot. dot. No, right? it's not. But you look but, at it, it's more like a, a circular. <laughs> yeah, but but the actual polka dot that I'm seeing and in, in you know in, in dresses mm -hmm. or in any kinds of fashions, it's like a giant circle. It's like a dime. It's like a little dime size circle. Right. Yeah. So I would I don't know. Maybe it would have been better if they call it polka circle. Polka circle. Yeah, well, I mean a dot is still like a circle. It's just uh, bigger. That's true. Right now. So. Besides clothing, you know polka dots is used in art too. Like yeah. There's a lot of paintings and murals and using polka dots. And you know comic books, right? You look right. carefully. It's like a little polka dot style mm -hmm. to it. Um, I I don't have any polka dot uh, clothing. I've seen some polka I, I dot shoes, does. but I don't have it. I know who does. Who does? Clown. Oh yeah, clown. clown. Oh yeah, actually yeah, clown does wear polka dots. Yeah. What else wears polka dots? Like, I mean, polka dots is... It's we call it simply seen on women more than men. Mm -hmm. Like for men, maybe polka dot is probably the tie. Could be the yeah. tie could be polka dot. Uh, oh yeah, their dress shirt can be polka They're, dot. Yeah, uh huh. But usually, it I think it looks much better like on a dress or something like that. Polka dot dress. I think it's because also the color that uh, became associated with, with polka dot, which are so, you know, like red, pink, yellow. Right, red. Uh -huh. More vibrant colors mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, so clowns, they wear polka dots, and like I said, it's just more than fashion to have polka dots. Here we have different designs, like you can paint a house polka dot, which is really weird. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the I mean, if you homeowner want... association will allow that, you know, right? I mean, if you want your house to stand out. Yeah, your house will then... definitely stand out. It's like, make a turn on the polka dot house. <laughs> <laughs> polka dot house. It's like, which house is that? Well, it's never going to be hard to miss. Oh, uh, there's a, a, it's not really like a, Polka dot, but it's like a Dalmatian is kind of like a polka dot dog. So spotted. It's, yeah, spotted, but it's mm -hmm. not really polka dot. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, so National Polka Dot Day. Put on your clothes. And if you have one. If you have a polka dot and listen to some, some polka music. There that's we go. That's where it came from. And also the famous song, BCBC. Bikini, how many, yeah, speaking of that song, I haven't Yellow heard of that dot. song for a Bikini. long time. So maybe today I'll try to listen yeah, to that should, song. Yeah, we should. We should. Sing it for the... For our friends. Next is Blonde Brownie Day, also known as a Blondie. So we oh, think of a brownie, okay. right? What flavor do you eat it with? What is it? Chocolate. Chocolate, exactly. So in this case, instead of chocolate, they're substituting for something more white. What or lighter sweet? colored. What's sweet and white? I would say caramel. No. Caramel is a little bit brownish. Okay. Vanilla. Vanilla. So oh, instead of chocolate, I, 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 they right. switch it with vanilla. And you look at the brownie, it's more of a... It's lighter, lighter color. color. It's a lighter color. It's like a more mm, like caramel color, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, that's, that's why I thought it was caramel because it yeah does it does look have like color caramel. caramel yeah. But so in this case, for these brownies, right? Instead of using chocolate as a main ingredient, we're gonna use vanilla, which gives us a little more more lighter color. Same process of making it flour, brown sugar, butter, eggs, baking powder. Then you put it on a pan, cut it into uh, rectangles, and serve it. You can put like different stuff in it, like. Different, talk, talk, different types of chocolate chips. Mm -hmm. White and dark chocolate chips, some butterscotch chips, and sometimes people put nuts in their brownies. Not a big fan of that. I'm okay. You're yeah, okay with as that? As long as it's not like those hard nuts that it's kind of hard to chew. Mm, right, right, right. So today is brown, uh, blonde, blonde brownie, brownie day. day. So, or blondie. Blondie, or a blondie. Just a vanilla whole brownie. And moving on for today in January 22nd, in today's history, we have the flight of the Boeing 747 in 1970. So this huge jumbo jet, right, entered its uh, commercial service in 1970, mm -hmm. and it took off from uh, JFK International Airport to London Heathrow Airport. So basically oh. from America to the UK. Yeah. And quite a travel. It is quite a travel. It's let me try to figure. I think it's around around six to ten hour flight. I think. Somewhere around there. Not sure. Because usually, when I travel to Europe, I usually go from LAX. I usually. Are we talking about for this one? Uh, no stop, right? It's a straight. This is non stop, non stop flight. And most of the Boeing 747 is still used to this day. Have you ever flown one, JR? I'm not sure. I only flown uh, the plane twice. 
in my life right really? now. When I got here in the U.S. from the Philippines. Right. And when I uh, flew to Las Vegas. <laughs> you actually flew to Las Vegas? You didn't drive? No. We, well, I did drove before, huh. but I also wanted to experience flying, which compared to what? Four hours of driving? Or four, hour, four, four to six hours, yeah. yeah. Or more depending on the traffic, uh, would be just about 45 minutes or less 45 than an minutes, hour yes, yeah. uh, when you flew. The when flight you fly. itself, the flight itself is 45 minutes, but the whole like taxing and uh, loading of thing, you probably add another hour to it. Probably. Well, uh, th that Depends time I really faster. didn't, we, I mean, I, I didn't bring any uh, suitcase or anything. It's literally just me, I'm, you know. And uh, <laughs> yeah, my money is in the ATM. <laughs> Yeah. So, so it's I still marvel to this day how these huge gigantic mm -hmm. ton it weighs a ton able to like keep flight in air for so long. We're well you about gotta about remember they didn't start like that. No, no, no. I mean it there's a, the smaller. Wright brothers are Wright definitely brother. um uh played a significant role. Yeah, we were talking about like six hundred, three hundred feet from the ground this way, we're like thousands of feet in right. the air. And the sheer size of it that means the bigger the size the more fuel it needs and more people it can fit right, right. but you know where it all started uh, it all started when uh, people you know start staring started staring at the birds and mm. wondered how they could fly you, you look know? at the airplanes some are designed like a bird like mm -hmm. they're aerodynamic so they are able to maintain altitude mm -hmm. flight without any uh, disturbances because like when you want to fly right or you want to drive on the road, you want like a steady drive travel. You don't want to like wibble wobbling in the air. That's no, scary. you're probably going to experience it. Uh, that, like, that's why there's a term called uh, turbulence. Turbulence, turbulence right. right. I mean, like, something that you can't really avoid uh, uh, there. It could be a, a bad turbulence or it could be a mild one that doesn't really make you worry. Same thing with your car too. Your car has like shock suspension mm -hmm. that helps you uh, maintain uh, uh, evenness in your driving. So, for me, I've been on a 747 like uh, over a dozen times. Wow! To be I travel a lot actually. Back then, a few years ago, I was traveling to Europe a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't been to Asia. That's probably soon next year when this, when things are more back to normal. Right. But yeah, you guys have flown on a Boeing 40 for a 747, right? Tell me and tell me where you went actually. Yeah. And like, who? Uh, what was a airport? The airline that I like the most is Lufthansa, the German one. Okay. It's so, it's so really nice, actually. Thing is, I can't remember what kind. You know, well, I mean, Spirit, I, Continental Air. Well, you Philippine remember? Airlines, obviously. Philippine Airlines. Yeah, and yeah. then the other one's JetBlue, but I don't think they have a Boeing <laughs> JetBlue, do they? Mm. JetBlue was a my domestic flight from here to uh, to Las Vegas. I think these planes are more reserved for more. International, more uh, yeah, more international, yeah. more uh, more travelers. Maybe yeah, like like a typically small airplane, probably have like fifty. Yeah, because if it's just 50, a, a domestic flight, domestic it, flight, you know, like 50, why would you get, Exactly. Why would you get a bigger flight? Yeah, international. That? You just want to pack as much as you can and travel more further mm -hmm. to be more uh, cost effective. Exactly. So like we're talking like a hundred, two hundred travelers. Uh -huh. Yeah. So yeah, 1970 in January 22nd. The Boeing 747 made its first maiden voyage from JFK to London Heathrow. And on this day, this notable figure that was born on this day is Guy Fieri. Not a pilot. Not a pilot. Nothing to do with flying. But he's a driver. Driving dies. dies. <laughs> and uh, what's the other word? Drive-ins. I forgot. Uh, drive. Uh, uh, drives, dive-ins, and... No, it's... Oh, my God. Uh, Why did I... Well, I'm we got your out. phone with you, so you can take a look. Uh, wait. Diners, drive... Diners, drive-ins, and dives. Okay, there, there we go. go. <laughs> See, I don't need my phone. So, Guy Fieri. So, he was born in... Uh, he was born in Columbus, Ohio, but he was actually uh, raised in uh, California. Oh. Yeah. Okay. In uh, Ferndale, is, which is in the rural Humboldt... Uh, County in California, it's like, I think it's like a little bit north of LA or somewhere around there. But yeah, he, although he was born in Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, he was mostly, uh, he spent most of his life in California. And he was born uh, Guy Ramsey Ferry. It's actually his real name is Ferry. Oh. F E R R Y. But. Oh, it's not Fieri? No, I'll tell you why. Okay. Yeah. So, you know how when uh, people who immigrated to America in the back then, mm -hmm. they had to change their names. They changed it more to a more Americanized name. Right. 
So he, his grandfather was Italian, so the f- last name was Fieri. But when he traveled to America, they changed it to Fieri. <laughs> Easier to pronounce, I Easier guess. Easier to pronounce. But it doesn't sound very uh, ear catching, you know? That's true. So when, uh, so when G- Guy grew up, right? He had interest in food, mm-hmm. and he actually went to uh, during his summers when he doesn't not going to school. He would work in restaurants and stuff like that, and his love of food kind of manifested because he became a chef. And when he became a chef, he actually changed his name to uh, Pierre, oh. so it stands out a little bit more. And during like the early two thousands, he was like the face of the Food Network. Right. right. I mean, he like, became really famous. He's very famous. You can notice with his uh, sunglasses, his spiky, uh, spiky hair, hair, yeah. hair, and his very uh, his beard too. His goatee beard. No, it's not really goatee. It's a beard. And his very, he's very like down to earth. You know, he's a very cool guy. That's a good too. Yeah. Uh huh. But it's funny that his middle name is Ramsey because you think he's like Gordon Ramsey too, the bubble chef. That's true. Yeah. So. He's uh, Th- those are the famous names in the uh, yeah, it is, American right? culinary industry, I guess, or you know, show business. Yeah. So here's the thing about his interest in food. Like during his high school years, right, he would spend his time mm-hmm. working odd jobs to save money. So okay. he actually went to uh, France. That's when he actually had study. No, not really study. He had uh, interest in it. That's where his interest in food grew. I see. And yeah, nowadays. He mostly uh, travel around the continental U.S. Mm-hmm. and discover these little hidden gems inside uh, the states, America, that have good food that you're not very aware of. Because there's a bunch of restaurants around in our area that we're not aware of, mm-hmm. and we've been we might be missing out some really good food. That's true. So yeah, uh, that's why I like watching his show. Drives, driving, dining, driving, diners, dining, driving, and dives, and dives, dives, get some good food. So happy birthday, Mr. Fieri. Fieri. So moving on to our uh, culture spotlight for this week, we're going to Laos. Laos. So Laos, landlocked country in Southeast Asia, um, the prim- primary religion that they practice is uh, Buddhism. Okay. Buddhism is like, you know, worship of uh, basically like inner peace. Inner peace, Medi- okay. Meditation and just try and find a way in life where you just live a good life and everyone around you also live a good life too. You just want to put in put in good intentions into the world. Whoa, what's happening here? Um, so another uh, tradition that they have, a religious tradition, is uh, animus. So animus oh, is, is that? basically anything in this world, right, is inhabited by spirits. Okay. So you have more respect for like common objects that you realize that it's like inhabited by these spirits. Mm-hmm. Good spirits, bad spirits, you just need to show respect. And it's very ingrained in their uh, culture. And sometimes when they think of their your hands, right? They feel the hands is more of a filthy, dirty object. It's always dirty because you're always doing things while right. the head is more clean and stuff like that. And it's more... So it, it garners more respect, more cleanliness, you know? And when I talk about like common objects, we can talk about like trees, buildings, mm-hmm. uh, sculptures. And for, truth, for yeah. the Laotian, Laotian people, right? Most sculpture that they s- construct the most, they build the most is the, of Buddha. Okay. They usually construct it out of uh, bronze, silver, wow. gold. And sometimes a mixture of both gold and silver. Mm-hmm. So yeah, when you go to uh, Laos, you see a lot of uh, sculpture with Buddha. Um, besides the sculpture that they make from gold and uh, and gold and silver, they have a lot of weaving. Weaving where they use uh, silk to make really pretty dress. Okay. Clothing, piece of article clothing that they wear for ceremonial purposes, which is day day living. Oh yeah, if you guys yeah. remember uh, my episode about uh, uh, Laos, mm-hmm. they were actually also uh, using the flowers right. for, their, for decorating their you know their, their yeah, silk dress uh, and scarves, dresses, and yeah. dresses mm-hmm. too. And because of their uh, religion of Buddhism being playing part of their culture, right? Another art form that they usually uh, partake in is woodworking. Oh. 
Okay. So when you look at these uh, temple shrines, they're you know how like for typically for us, right? We have our wood. Mm -hmm. Just leave it as that. They carve intricate uh, sceneries, elephants, the farmers. That's cool. Into these woodworks that it just makes the whole shrine, the whole temple more stand out. That's true. So uh -huh. like when you're just like for me, when I'm staring at this building, right? You can't really see any anything in it. It's just blank. Mm -hmm. But when you stare at these uh, woodworkings that the Laotian of woodworkers make, you can see a story of like a farmer, elephant, and it's never like a dull moment. So like when you're sitting there, right? When you're meditating, you're just realizing where we came from, how sim simple life is, mm -hmm. simplicity of life, while just enjoying how much craft went into the work and making this temple a shrine more of oneness you know that's true yeah uh, yeah it's yeah, just yeah. the dedication the dedication you, uh, you, you appreciate put it in there you appreciate uh -huh. it way the appreciation more. exactly so i do like looking at those shrines on top of, even though i'm not buddhist or anything like that i want to see how they put their hard work their blood and sweat right their love into their work and you can grow appreciate that more mm -hmm. so the culture of the laotian people is very rich and you have a chance me and you, we should go. We should see the temples and shrines that they have. Yeah, yeah, it's a really beautiful uh, well, well, yeah, I'll definitely, I'll, uh, I'll be able to appreciate, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, those yeah. Uh, structures. And you could just by looking at them for most of it. I mean, even if you don't see it in in real life, or like when you're watching, uh, right. let's say, history or the culture about mm -hmm. Laos, uh, I think it's you know that's more than enough for you to actually realize how how much they put put in in yeah, their effort. culture but i feel like when you look at the pictures right it, it never do it justice when you see That's it with true. your own it's eyes always better to see it in real life yeah you see the you see the the light just bouncing off the curvature mm -hmm. it's something you can't capture fully in a picture so that's why i want to really want to travel so <laughs> you actually see it with your own eyes you yeah. don't want to take another person's word for it you know right yeah so that's our cultural spotlight laos Moving on, we go to our animal of the day. Animal of the day. So there's a bunch of little bit clues, something to tie together with all these stuff of the days that we're gonna talk about. All right, give and it a best shot. You try to guess too, okay, Jer? Okay. So our, our first animal is a Garibaldi. Garibaldi. Garibaldi is a damselfish. Kind of looks like a goldfish. It's kind of like a goldfish. It looks like a goldfish, but it's a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. These guys can grow up to 15 inch, so it's around a little over one uh, one foot long. Uh, they're usually found in a subtropical north uh, northeastern part of the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why they call it Garibaldi fish is because it's named after a famous Italian general. Okay. His name was uh, Giuseppe Garibaldi. So these guys, you know what's fascinating about these guys? Even though it's named after an Italian general, right? It's actually California's state marine fish. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, <laughs> I, didn't, I, I, really, I just found that out too. And these guys, look at them. They look tough, right? They, they look like they're built. Because of that, they're very, very aggressive. They're very protective of the eggs. I mean, so, the, the fish kind of look serious. It right looks here. very serious. And when you look at like other fish, right? The other fish, their fins and their uh, tail, they're more transparent. Mm -hmm. You can see through it, right? But these guys, the Jerry Baldi, they're more opaque. So it's more... Uh, dark in color right yeah right. so yeah so the male the male fish is very aggressive uh, protecting their eggs and like they are often seen attacking divers who's getting really close to their nests really yeah wow. they can bite they bite they will bite you they're very uh, aggressive but they're aggressive in a good way you know they're mm -hmm. not aggressive because they want to pick a fight they're aggressive because right. they want to protect their eggs they're small though yeah that's they're small so yeah so if you're swimming <laughs> you would feel something like if they tried to attack you on your leg but the, the yeah, reason that? yeah i know it's like what's pegging me oh <laughs> I, I guess i'm near the nest of a uh, garibaldi so the reason why they're so protective of eggs is because their eggs are very edible so other fishes oh. try seek them out try to eat it so these guys have to be on that's defense why. they're that's always why. on defense uh -huh. um they're kind of like um they usually found around the not really like deep ocean like mm -hmm. around like 100 feet so they're really near to the top so you can probably can see it if you go diving yeah um you can find it in the um, most like i said mostly in the northeastern part of the uh, pacific ocean so if you're around like monterey bay in california 
or all the way down to uh, Baja. You can find these guys in the ocean. But oh, just be careful. Okay. Don't get too close to their nest because they will start biting, biting your legs or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the Gary Baldi. So like, look at this color. It's like this bright orange, some really dark orange here. Really beautiful fish. So moving on to the plant of the day. Plant of the day, let's see. Now we have the persimmon. Do you like eating these things? These I, things? Yeah, I do. Oh, I, you know why I, I say things? Do you think it's a fruit or a, a vegetable? I thought it was fruit. It is a fruit. So similar to the tomato, right? People think tomatoes are vegetable because you always eat it with like, right. right. But they have seeds, so they're more of a fruit berry. Mm -hmm. Fruit slash berry. So persimmons, they're usually f the most common uh, cultivated uh, species is Asian persimmons. Uh, and China produces two thirds of the world's Wow. Yeah. The world's uh, produce. Product. So I like eating them really because you can eat them raw, mm -hmm. dried, cooked, but I prefer eating it just like sliced up like apple. Yeah, yeah. I like fruit. But, uh, you like eating these things? Um, I'm, I like eating them, but it's not, I mean, persimmons are not one of my favorites. It's not your but favorite. I'm okay with it. Oh, you're okay. You're like, if you have it, it's like, why not yeah, you yeah. eat it? Uh -huh. But you're not like actively seeking out for No, them. no. Yeah. My old house, we used to have a persimmons tree. Okay. Uh, pers we used to grow persimmons. But yeah. And not a big fan either. No, I am a fan. Actually, okay. I like it. But like I said, I'm not going out to the supermarket. I'm not craving it like midnight cravings. Oh, I need a persimmon. Yeah, yeah that's probably not um, uh, something that I would, you know, buy in the market. Yeah. yeah. Cover. yeah. Unless it's like. But if a, somebody gives it to me, I'll give it to you. It. <laughs> or you require yeah. in a recipe, you probably buy it. Right. So I remember when we talked about the Greek mythology, right? Okay. Persimmon is, is an ancient fruit, right? A lot of people have it a long time ago. And it was in a Greek mythology where Persephone was kidnapped into uh, Hades, into the underworld uh -huh. by Hades. And she was trapped there because she ate the seed of a persimmon. No, actually, no, it was not persimmon. It was pomegranate. Uh -huh. <laughs> Shoot, I caught myself. These, these two, yeah. So it's not a person, it was a pomegranate. I, I was about to say that. Yeah, it was a I, I thought the famous fruit in uh, Greek mythology is uh, pomegranate. <laughs> oh, because it started with P and then fruit. I'm kind of confused. But yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was scratch that. Scratch that. I was trolling up. So yeah, persimmon. You notice how it's. What color is this? It's like a yellow, yeah, I yellow, think I'm, see, I'm sorry to see yellow, the color. Yellow, yellow, orange. I, I need uh, the next uh, uh, stuff of the day or okay. the thing of the day to see. We can move on to the art of the day. Okay, art of the day. Let's see. The Art of Day is okay. a burning of House of Lords and Commons by J.M. W. Turner. This is J.M. W. It's Joseph Mallard. Ah, I keep forgetting his name, but it's J.M. W. But it's always he's always known as J.M. W. Turner. J.M. W. Turner. Yeah. He's got like four names. I guess. Yeah, yeah. His uh, his first uh, first name. Actually, let's look it up. I keep forgetting. Let me his let name. me guess. Joseph Marshall Will. Joseph Mallard Williams. Mallard Williams. Mallard okay. Williams. So this depicts the fire that broke out in the House of Parliament in the United Kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. In the evening of uh, October 16, 1834. So look at that fire raging. It's a burning of a government building. Yeah. It's an oil painting, and it's currently held in the Philadelphia Museum. So you see that? So mini, your mini theme is orange. You see this bright orange thing? <laughs> so we have the fish that's orange. We figured it out, guys. We figured it out. Or maybe, maybe. Maybe let's see if our word of the day has okay. anything to do with the word orange. So the word of the day is harangue, <laughs> which is spelled as H-A-R-A-N-G-U-E. Okay. So it's a noun, meaning lengthy and aggressive speech. Like if I talk to you, like very aggressive, very long. I mean, I'm haranguing you. Haranguing. So the reason why I picked this word, it kind of sound like orange. No. <laughs> orange, harangue, you know? That was, a, that was so much of a stretch. Guys. I know, it's a big stretch. Because like, there's a lot of words. Because orange itself is really hard to uh, have different synonyms. It just describes the color, right? Yeah. You can say like amber. It's, it's either just the color or the fruit. Yeah, the color of the fruit, yeah. When you type in orange, you probably get the fruit or the color. Mm -hmm. And... It's so it's funny. It's still a stretch, like, though. Yeah, it is a stretch, but it sounds the same. If you're going to do a rap, you, you can thank me. <laughs> you use orange harangue. If, if I'm going to do a rap, I'm not even going to mention the word orange. You're going to make orange. That's so hard. It's so hard. Yeah. But yeah, have you been uh, 
Have you been this stunty being harangued before? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, like some people are just like so aggressive to you. This yeah, is like uh-huh. customer support, right? Where you're like on your phone, you have these people who are like they're you know, like dissatisfied with the service, right? And mm-hmm. like, so aggressive. Like, they're, they're demanding of, hey, I pay for this much amount of money, I deserve this much much right. amount of service, you guys aren't doing it. And they go without end. It's mm-hmm. like a bunch of run on sentences. Well, I used to work at a fast food chain before, and yeah, it's a it's, yeah. You get that a, a lot. It's too. a pretty common thing <laughs> that uh, happens, but uh, you gotta understand. Uh, some of them are having a bad day too. Yeah, you so have you a bad day. Yeah, you don't wanna uh, be upset about it too. You mm. know? Yeah, I usually get this because I did something bad in school. Get like harangued. Yeah, get harangued by the principal, stuff like that, for oh, starting man. fights and stuff like that. Although it's not orange, it does sound like orange, harangue, orange, no, it's still orange, <laughs> orange, harangue. All right. So we can move on to our science fact of the day. It is bear carotene. That was something that's orange too, I guess. We'll learn why. Okay. So it's, it has uh, it's a long chain, it's an organic com- uh, compound because it has contained carbon and hydrogen. Mm-hmm. And it has a lot of carbon and a lot of hydrogen. If you look at here, it's C40, so it has... 40. 40. You look at uh, these, uh, what do you call it? Black, brown, grayish orbs. Those Each one represents a uh, carbon molecule. Okay, the molecule. So it has 40 molecules. But no, not carbon. molecule. Yeah, it's like an atom. atom. And you have uh, 56, 56 hydrogen, hydrogen attached to each of the carbon. So it's a long chain. Mm-hmm. It's a long hydrocarbon chain. And mm-hmm. it's organic because it is mostly carbon and hydrogen. So the little funny little B that's written in front of the word carotene that symbolizes the Greek letter beta. Mm-hmm. So it's beta carotene. And when you think of like the word carotene, does it sound like a vegetable that you're aware of? That's yeah. What what is that vegetable, Jr? Uh, something that Bugs Bunny eats. That's a carrot. Carrot. Yeah. So the beta carotene, right? It's usually found. It gives the pigmentation, the color. Mm-hmm. of a really red orange color in fruits plants and even fungus fungies uh when you think about that you when you think of an orange color in the fruit you always think it probably has beta carotene right okay yeah, yeah. is beta car- carotene uh, the same as vitamin a it's yes not- it's oh it a, is okay it's I actually two uh, different things it's a precursor so it's part of a building blocks that is built into it's transformed into vitamin a oh Okay. So that's why people say you eat carrots, it creates vitamin A, which helps your eye. So, you know so, what's funny? Yes. Uh, that means it covers all the first three letters. You got the vitamin A. Yes. With the beta, letter B. Okay. Carotene, letter ABC, C. The ABC of yeah, vitamin A. Yeah, because ABC, that's so, awesome. Yeah, vitamin A is very good for your eyes. mostly called retinol and helps your uh, eyesight and stuff like that. Uh, but the thing is, it's one of the vitamins that is stored in your fat. Okay. So like when you take vitamin C, right? You take excess amount, like like way more than you're supposed to take, right? Mm-hmm. You just uh, expel it through your urine. However, these guys, this vitamin A, right? It's stored in your fat. So it's really hard to get rid of your fat. Like, okay. It's really hard to get rid of your fat. <laughs> so that builds up, the build up of vitamin A in your fat, right? It creates a lot of toxicity in yes. your body. Uh-huh. And that toxicity uh, will manifest itself into an orange colored skin. Oh, yes. I see. So we eat a lot of this beta carotene, right? And the beta carotene is converted to vitamin A. Vitamin A is stored in your fat. And you don't burn your fat or use up your vitamin, right? Mm-hmm. You would have this orange hue to your skin. It's which it's, becomes toxic to your body. Yes. It's, it's not really dangerous, but it's just an annoyance. Mm-hmm. And once you have that, you got to get rid of that excess uh, carotene, beta carotene. Yeah. So, even though it's healthy for you, you need some vitamin A, right? Uh, excess of it will cause your skin to turn orange. And also, be aware uh, of taking a lot of uh, vitamin A, beta carotene, when you take uh, cholesterol medications. Okay. So, cholesterol medication are your statins, right? Your atorvastatins, your lip, uh, commonly known as Lipitor, your Simisvastin, a bunch of cholesterol. So, don't, it actually reduces your. Uh, the efficacy of the medication so the medicine is not actually having its full effect if you got if you're you taking a lot, a lot of care of body lot of beta carotene oh beta carotene, beta carotene. Okay. which converts to vitamin a so yeah it's good for you 
He's not, I'm gonna tell you the three, the four vitamins that you should be, uh, should be keeping aware of how much you're taking. Mm -hmm. It's vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K, and vitamin A. Those are the ones that stores in your fat. So be aware how much you take, but also you need to take a, the, the right amount, the daily doses, so you have a good, uh, what do you call it? Uh, good. So you don't be deficient in it. Right. Right. Well, just like what we uh, uh, said uh, again, you know, at, for, at the first part of your show, mm -hmm. it's moderation. It's moderation. Always moderation, guys. Whatever it is, uh, even water. They say, yeah, water is good for your body, but if you're drinking yeah, a lot of water, it's not good either. Not good. <laughs> yeah. So everything's in moderation. So yeah, our little mini theme of the day. Orange. It's orange. I called it, guys. Even though the you harangue part, it. the harangue part wasn't really orange. Except for that one. Which is <laughs> harangue part. But yeah, thank you guys for uh, watching this daily video for January 22nd. I appreciate right, guys, we got you. One, one more week for Friday? We have, uh, this is the fourth uh, Friday of the month, and we mm -hmm. have one more. So I'll see you guys for the last Friday in January. Which is the 29th. Which is the 29th. Which is also going to be our raffle day. Oh, February, yeah. Guys. So, uh, you know, nice. make sure to be around that day, All okay? All right. So. Oh, no. What did you do, Joe? <laughs> I tried to click this. There we go. There we go. Okay, see you guys next week. See ya. Bye.